Welcome everyone, my name is Sarah Davis and I'm with the Illinois State Museum and today we're going to be looking a little closer at a particular piece of artwork. So have you ever wondered what the artist's background or where they're coming from when they've painted a particular piece of art? Well that's what we're going to discover a little bit more about today and I am here with curator of art Doug Stapleton and he is going to show us a little bit more about the art behind me. So hi Doug. Hi Sarah. So what can you tell us about the artist and this piece of art? Uh, this is a painting by Miyoko Ito and it's titled Sacramento. I want to tell you a little bit about Miyoko's background. Uh, her life and her artwork were greatly influenced by major events of the 20th century as a Japanese American artist. She moved between two cultures, the Japanese culture of her parents and the American culture of her birth. Now Miyoko was born in Berkeley, California in 1918. Her father came from Japan many years uh, earlier as a young man and made his way among the Japanese American community in California. Life for Japanese Americans in California was difficult due to housing and economic restrictions that were placed on them. Now Ito's father addressed these complications by sending his young family back to, to Japan for a five-year period while he tried to secure a better living condition for them. So five-year-old Miyoko, her pregnant mother, and her younger sister uh, were now living in a different culture. They left everything they knew behind in California. And uh, the artist said of those years that these were, quote, the five years that are the root of who I am now. And she described them as very wonderful and terribly traumatic. Now the wonderful part was her introduction to art while she was in school. And the traumatic part was that she became very, very ill and she couldn't walk for a period of time. And the doctors weren't sure what was wrong with her, but she uh, put it down to the difficulties of living in a new country. Now, uh, Ito's family returned to Berkeley where she attended high school and then she enrolled at the University of California of Berkeley to study art, specifically watercolor. But the next upheaval in her life came in 1942 when President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066. Now this executive order called for the removal of quote, resident enemy aliens from the coastal areas and military zones of the United States. Now why? The answer was given for national security. You see Pearl Harbor Naval Base had been bombed in Hawaii two months earlier by the Empire of Japan. This was in December of 1941. The United States had now declared war in Japan and had entered into World War II. This uh, executive order uh, was really affected Japanese Americans mostly. They were targeted for removal to internment camps. Japanese immigrants and their children, their descendants, were systematically rounded up and then housed in cramp detention centers. Approximately 122,000 adults and children were forcibly removed from their homes over a six-month period. And these families were only given 48 hours in which to move to sell their business, to sell their home, to settle their affairs in this short amount of time. It was a very traumatic and devastating time and upheaval in people's lives. And all of this was based on ethnic suspicion and fear. Now Ito, she was in her senior year at college when she and her new husband were relocated to Tanferan Detention Camp. This was uh, an assembly center that was a former horse race track just south of San Francisco. And in this place, almost 8,000 people were housed in cramped quarters. Some of them were horse stalls. 
Now Ito, at the suggestion of her husband, applied to go to graduate school. And she was accepted, was able to be released from the detention camp where her husband stayed, and she attended Smith College in Massachusetts, and then a year later transferred to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. But she would go back during the summers and spend time with her husband, who had then been relocated to the Topaz Detention Center in Utah. So again, a second upheaval in her life as a young adult. Now, Ito and her husband eventually, they settled in Chicago and raised a family. And Miyoko would go on to have a 40-year career as a very loved and respected artist in that city. And her paintings are known for their rich, rich colors, like this piece here, Sacramento, that are filled with abstract shapes, soft, luminous colors that suggest many things. Uh, primarily, it looks like an abstraction, but we have suggestions of a landscape, we have a suggestion of architecture, we have suggestions maybe of plant materials, um, of leaves and grass, and this is what makes uh, her work so rich and luminous. Um, her studies um, in Japanese painting, her studies in watercolor can be seen in the soft colors. And as a young student, she was really influenced by artists like Picasso, uh, artists from Europe during the mid-20th century who were working with abstraction, taking the images of the real world and breaking them apart into their like shapes and colors. And we see that in this piece here. Um, the, the painting is called Sacramento, and Sacramento is a town in California. So as a, an adult, when she is painting this piece, she's remembering her time as a child in California. She's remembering the colors of the sunset uh, along the Pacific Ocean, and she's remembering the soft architectural shapes that she would have seen in California. And this piece becomes this uh, memory painting of her childhood. And as she said about her work, that as a painter, I have no place to go, I have no place to take myself, but then into my paintings. So thank you, Doug, for um, sharing a little bit more about the artist and the painting, and we hope you learned a little bit more about how you can see um, the artist and their experience in their artwork.